informed consent is an important consideration in research where there is involvement of human subjects or human participants. What is informed consent? Why do we need to have informed consent as part of the research process? And what is the general process of informed consent? These are the questions that we will respond to in this presentation. Now, first of all, what is a consent? We know that a consent is generally, refer generally a consent refers to agreement to do something or to get involved in something. <clears throat> so if people agree to, uh, agree to involve in, in a process or in something, um, we would say that they have the consent or we have their consent uh, in terms of their invol involvement in the process. Um, consent in the research context um, is an extension of consent is agreement. The research participants or respondents uh, to become part of the research process or project or experiments or experiment or study. So um, content consent in research actually then is the agreement of the research participants to take part in the research process. Now, what is informed consent? Informed consent is actually based on adequate knowledge about the what, when, why, and how of the research process, and about the role of the participants or respondents and its implications. So what we can say, um, simply is that informed consent actually means that the participants have agreed to take part in the research process based on informed decision regarding um, the what of their participation, the when of their participation, the why of the research process and their participation in it, and the how of the research process and the participation of the participants. And also what role is expected of the participants or the subjects in the research process. So um, if the participants have adequate knowledge related to these questions before they participate, before they agree to participate in the research process, we will say that they have informed consent. Now, why do we need to have informed consent as part of the research process? So, first of all, um, we must ensure and we must know that research, academic research, needs to follow the principle of ethicality. That actually means that research, the process of research should follow ethical considerations and um, for research to be valid and authentic. It should be in line with established research ethics. And, eth and, and informed consent is actually, consent is actually a part of the research ethics process. So what happens is that informed consent, consent actually makes the process of research ethical and authentic and so that's why we need to have informed consent. Besides this, informed consent actually revolves around the philosophy that it ensures research participants or respondents personal freedom of choice in physical, psychological and economic security um, in that they could uh, so there could be issues related to their security in these various ways when they are taking part of part in the research process. Then informed consent also counters possibilities of coercion and deception in the process of research. The consent, the process of, of taking consent makes it, uh, makes 
it impossible or difficult uh, for the researchers to coerce or to deceive. So there are, there are, there are possibilities of such things in the research process. So informed consent will counter such things. Now, the how of it, uh, or in other words, what, what is the general process of obtaining informed consent? Now, informed consent, uh, generally the contents of the informed consent, so we can say informed consent is in the form of a document, um, gen um, generally written document, and that document has uh, certain contents that make the structure and content of that document. So the first one is that the informed consent sh should have information related to the researcher, which is who is the researcher? What research is he or she conducting? Why are they conducting that research? So the, 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 the researcher should give information relate, related to the why of their research in the informed consent. How are they going to conduct the research or the general methodology or the involvement of the, uh, or the role of the researcher and the participant in the research process? When are they going to conduct the research and where are they going to conduct the research? So these are some of the main questions that are responded to in the informed consent. Then, um, the informed consent also have uh, responses to questions of the who, what, why, how, when, and where of the participant. That is, who are the expected participants or respondents in the study? What is their role uh, in the process of research that is especially in the process of data collection? Um, so their role in terms of giving data or in terms of becoming part of the research process, why the why of their participation? So why is it that the respondents should participate in the study? Um, the how of it, so how or what will be the nature of the participation of the participants? The when of it, when is it expected from them to take part in the study? and also the where of it. So these are the general questions that are responded to in the informed consent. And both the researcher and the participants need to know about these. Then the data protection, safety, or sensitivity of data. The informed consent also have assurances related to the how the data will be protected, how will the safety of the data will be ensured, and what is the level of sensitivity of the data, and what will be what steps will be taken to ensure the safety of sensitive data. Then, possible advantages and disadvantages for particip participants. So, the informed concept should also briefly respond to what advantages or possible disadvantages participants might have as a result of their participation in the research process. Then the informed consent must, uh, uh, must describe that the, the participation of the research participants is voluntary, so there is no force or compulsion, and so the participants uh, always have the right to withdraw from the research process at any time or at any stage. And then confidentiality and anonymity. The informed consent also has um, sections that assure the respondents or the participants the confidentiality of their data and in some cases anonymity of so they so the assure the, the assurance that the participants will remain anonymous and their personal data will not be shared with third party. Now, the last part is of this is like um, the contents of the informed consent generally could be both in written form or oral, depends on situations and possibilities. So generally, it's better to have written informed consent 
but in some cases, a written informed consent might not be possible uh, for a number of reasons, including the reluctance on the part of the participants to, uh, to sign um, a written agreement or consent. So in that case, this could be done orally as well. Um, so the format, whether it's uh, written or oral, will depend on possibilities or situations. Uh, that will vary from research context to research context. The other thing is that generally um, adults, that is 18 years of age or above, can give their own consent, while children uh, generally uh, can give consent. Uh, the, so on the part of children, guardians can give consent. Uh, children who range up to the age of six years, it is generally essential for guardians to give assent, uh, uh, consent on their part, such as parents or teachers or, or, uh, or other guardians. And for children from age seven to 17, it is important that the guardians give their consent, plus that consent is then assented by uh, or agreed to by children as well. The when of it is, so when should uh, the researchers obtain the informed consent? Well, this, is, this generally should be before the data collection so that um, the respondents are given sufficient time to understand the what, why, and how of their participation. And lastly, <clears throat> The form, as I said earlier, uh, could be oral or written. Uh, and also, there are consents that could be longer and shorter. So generally, um, the more literate respondents might respond to longer and more detailed form of informed consent, while less literate or maybe illiterate or, uh, or, or maybe uh, participants or, or respondents who have other, other disabilities, uh, there might be summarized forms of, of written um, informed consent so that they can easily understand and decide on their participation in the research process.